please welcome Mr. John Prime, Sturgill Simpson. So John, when you started writing songs, you just came out with these amazing songs. And you know, I, I talked to your, your brothers and they said they were even amazed when they heard these. Like, our brother wrote those songs? Do you remember when those songs came out? Were, did they surprise you as well? Yeah, uh, some, some were so different that uh, I hesitated to sing them for anybody because I thought, this is pretty, I haven't heard anything like this before, like Sam Stone. I thought, is it because it's really good or is it because it's like so awful? And the first time I sang it in public, people didn't applaud, they just looked at me. And I, and I thought, oh shit, this is worse than I thought, you know? I mean, what led you to write those kind of songs? I was looking for something that would interest me, and these mm. interested me, but I didn't know if that would appeal to anybody else. I really wasn't thinking that I was a songwriter, as like Sturgill says. I mean, I, I was just, it was a hobby. It took three or four beers for me to stand up and <laughs> sing to 12 people, you know? Mm. You're doing better than I was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a story about you. He invited you to the Carly Simons apartment, and Dylan was there, and other songwriters. That, that was the first week I was in New York. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> yeah. I, I got to New York, and me and Goodman picked up a Village Voice, and saw that Chris was playing at the bitter end. This wasn't planned. Like we just got off the plane, and we said, "Hey, let's go straight down there." So we had, it was like a, one of those old B movies. We had a little suitcase and a guitar. And we get out of a cab, and there's Chris and his whole band. You couldn't drink in the bitter end. You had to go next door to a place called the Dugout, because they just served ice cream in the bitter end. I saw Stevie Wonder eating a banana split once. So that, <laughs> that was really cool, yeah. You know? Well, as I recall, Dylan was pretty impressed with your songs. He called them mid Midwestern mind trips to the nth degree. I mean, Bob was not on the road. He was not performing anywhere. Here he comes bopping up the stairs and singing songs with me and Goodman and Christopherson. And it was more than surreal. You know? uh, a couple of weeks later, he got up and played harmonica and sang behind me. And he, I introduced him. I said, ladies and gentlemen, Bob Dylan. About three people applaud because they figure I'm just joking around. <laughs> yeah. you think songs will always matter. Do people always want songs in their lives? Songs are different from the music business and music and even records. You know, if people didn't have music, they'd come up with it. They would just do it. They'd drone and moan in the hmm. kitchen at night, and like music would come out of it. You know, it's like a it's something that people need, and they need to get stuff out of them so people would write songs, you know, otherwise you never get it out of you. Memories, they can't be broken. They can't be won at carnivals for free. Well, it took me years to get those souvenirs, and I don't know how they slipped away from me. What's up, y'all? This is B.O.B. -B. This is G-Eazy. I'm Mo. This is Julia Michaels. This is Logic. Make sure you subscribe to the Recording Academy channel. Flex.